in part A, I will multiply the two numbers, so I've got 12, and then for the two letters, I just add the powers, so I've got e to the power of 9, f to the power of 2. For part B, I will split the numbers and letters separately, so I have 27 to the power of 2 over 3 times 8 to the 12, all to the power of 2 over 3. The first part is just 9. And then for the second part, I just multiply the two powers and I get 8 to the power of 8. For part C, I will solve this as if it was an equation. So I'm going to take the minus 3q to the left and add it. So I've got 5q is bigger or equal than 31. So q is more than or equal to 31 over 5. You can write this as a decimal if you want. For part d, all the possible integers for n, so I get minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, not 3, since I have a strict inequality. For question 2, I'll start by writing area of circle equals area of trapezium. Now, the area of the circle is pi r squared. For the trapezium is a plus b times height over 2a, and b are the two parallel bases. Let's substitute our values in. So pi 8.5 squared is equal to 20 plus 25 times height over 2. This will give me 289 over 4 pi is equal to 45 over 2 times h. So to find h, I will just do 289 over 4 pi divided by 45 over 2 and will give me an answer of 10.1 to one decimal place. In part A, since the number of green bricks and the number of orange bricks is the same, I'm going to write x and x here. So 0 0.26 plus 0 0.3 plus 2x must be equal to 100%. That is equal to 1. So 2x is equal to 0 0.44. x comes out to be 0 0.22. And that's the probability of getting an orange brick. Then for part B, I'm being told that there are 91 red bricks in the back. So let's write down for the red ones. I've got my total, which I don't know, times 0 0.26, which is the probability, comes out to be 91. So the total is 91 over 0 0.26. So I have a total of 350 bricks. And then let's move on to the blue ones. The total, which is 350 times 0 0.3, will give me the number of blue bricks. And I want the total of red and blue. So let's write red plus blue is equal to 91 plus 105 which is 196, and then if each layer has four bricks, I will do 196 divided by four, and this will give me 49, so there are 49 layers. In question four, I have a sequence that starts with seven, so A is seven, and increases by 4, so d is equal to 4. I need to write down an expression in terms of n. So let's write down the formula for the nth term. And if I substitute my values of a and d, I get 7 
plus n minus 1 times 4, which when expanded gives me 7 plus 4n minus 4, which simplifies to 4n plus 3. For part b, I'm given a different sequence. I need to find the first three terms, so I'm going to substitute n is 1, n is 2, and n is 3, and I'm going to get 78, 76, and 74. The question C says there are no numbers that are in both of the sequences. Explain why, and the reason is that the first sequence is only odd numbers, and the second sequence is only even numbers. In question 5, since I have a 4% interest, then my multiplying factor would be 104 out of 100, or 1.04. So to calculate the new amount, the final amount, I would just multiply the original amount by multiplying factor to the power of 3 and this would give me 20,247.55 so the interest would be this new amount, the final amount minus the original amount which gives me an interest of 2,028 to the nearest rupee. For question 6, I'll use one of the three trigonometric ratios, sine, cos, and tan. In this case, I have the opposite angle and I have the adjacent one. I don't know the hypotenuse, so I'll use the tan ratio. So I've got tan of angle x is equal 8 over 12. So x is equal to the inverse tan of 8 over 12, which comes out to be 33.7 degrees. In question 7, I'll use the fact that the angle BAO and the angle BCO are 90 degrees because the angle between a tangent and a radius is a right angle and then all four angles are 360 because they are angles in a quadrilateral so let's write this down note that Although these two angles add up to 180 degrees, giving us a reason that opposite angles of a quadrilateral, whether cyclic or not, add up to 180 degrees, will give you no marks. In question 8, I've got two statements, two relationships. From the first one, A is equal to 1.2 times B. And from the second one, C is equal to 7 eighths of B. And I'm given the value of C. So I'll start from the second relationship. C is 7 over 8 times B. So 31.50 is 7 eighths of B. So to find B is 31.50 divided by 7 over 8. B comes out to be 36. So A is equal to 1.2 times 36. So A is 43.20. In question 9, I'm given a frequency table. I'm asked to complete the cumulative frequency table. The, fr the first cumulative frequency is 4. Then the second one is 4 plus 14 which will give me 18 then the third one is the sum of the first three and so on so i have 35 48 55 58 
and 60. In part B, I need to draw a cumulative frequency graph. Note that my x coordinates are the upper bounds of each category and my y coordinates are the cumulative frequencies. Once I put the points on the grid, I can join them using a curve or straight line segments. In part C, I need to find an estimate for the interquartile range. This is IQR, n is equal to the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Now for the lower quartile, this will be a quarter of 60, which is equal to 15. So I'm going to take the 15th observation from the graph. And then for Q3, I'm going to take three quarters of 60, which is the 45th observation from my graph. And the way to do so is go back to the graph and starting from the y-axis at 15 and 45 respectively, I'll go find the corresponding x coordinate of each. So the two values I get are approximately 18 and 38. So the inter quartile range is the difference between the two and it comes out approximately 20. Depending on your graph, you will get slightly different answers. Now for part D, I am given an age of 48 and I want to find how many of the 60 people are more than 48. So I'm going to use my graph, but this time I'll start from the x-axis at 48 and I will find the cumulative frequency that corresponds to this value. So from my graph, I get approximately 53.5. So since I've got more than 48 years old, I'm going to subtract 60 minus 53.5 which is approximately 6.5. So I'm going to say about seven people. Depending on your graph, you might get something slightly different than seven. For question 10, let's remind ourselves of the formula for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. In the case of a regular polygon, like these two polygons, I can divide by n and get the size of each interior angle. So let's do this formula for the pentagon and the octagon. For the pentagon, I have 5 minus 2 times 180, this is the sum, divided by 5 will give me 108 degrees for each interior angle. And then for the octagon, 8 minus 2 times 180 divided by 8 will give me 135 degrees for each interior angle. Let's put these two angles on our shape. The red angle is the interior angle of the octagon and the blue one is the interior angle of the pentagon. The purple angle is their difference and it is one of the two angles at the base of the isosceles triangle. So 135 minus 108 is equal to 27 and this is the purple angle marked on my diagram. So y is equal to 180 minus 2 of those angles, which comes out to be 1, 
to 6. In question 11, the lowest common multiple of the three denominators is 10. So I'll make the denominators the same and cancel them out. So I'll need to multiply the first one by 2, the second fraction by 5, and the third one by 10. Now I will not write down the denominators since they cancel out. I'll just write the numerator. So I have 2, 3x minus 2 minus 5, 3 minus 4x equals 20. I will expand 6x minus 4 minus 15 and be careful now minus times a minus gives me plus 20x is equal to 20. So I've got 26x minus 19 is equal to 20. Let's take the 19 to the other side. 26x is equal to 39. So x is 39 over 26, which simplifies to 3 over 2 or 1.5. For part A, I'll find the derivative. Now x cubed becomes 3x squared minus 6 times 2 is 12x to the power of 1 minus 15. And this is the derivative. Now for part B, I have two stationary points. So whenever I have a stationary point, dy dx must be equal to 0. So I've got 3x squared minus 12x minus 15, which I got above, is equal to 0. Now let's divide by 3x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. I will factorize x minus 5, x plus 1 is 0. So I've got two solutions, x equals to 5 or x equals minus 1. And to find the corresponding y coordinates, I will substitute these values in the original equation, the y equation. So I have y equals to 5 cubed minus 6, 5 squared minus 15 times 5 y comes out to be minus 100 and then I will repeat with minus 1 so y is minus 1 cubed minus 6 times minus 1 squared minus 15 times minus 1 and in this case y comes out to be 8 so my stationary points are 5 minus 100 and minus 1 8 now for question 13, note that at least one language is being studied, so the outside region is zero. And then to complete the diagram, I'll start with the triple intersection. So I've got a seven at the center. Then I'm being told that German and French, I've got 10 students, so this region is 10 minus 7, which will give me 3. Then 12 study both Spanish and German. So this is 12 minus 7, which is 5. And then 9 students study French and Spanish. So 9 minus 7 leaves me a 2. Then 16 study Spanish. So this region here is 16 minus 5 and 7 and 2, which leaves me a 2. And finally, 18 study German. So 18 minus 3 and 7 and 5 is equal to 3. Now, I could use the fact that there's a total of 30 students to find this region here, French only, but the question asks for the number of students who study French. And since I know that the total is 30, then I can subtract 30 minus three 
5 and 2 to get the required number. So 30 minus 3 and 5 and 2 gives me a 20 and this is the number of students that study French. Now for part A, let's write x equals 0 0.32424 and so on. Note that the repeating pattern is 2 and 4. Now, if I could move the decimal place from where it is up to this point here, then my number would become 10x. If I move it from where it is to this point here, it would become a thousand x. So I'm going to write here a thousand x is equal to 324.2424 and so on. And then 10x is equal to 3.2424 and so on. And then I can subtract this and get 990x is equal to 321. So x is 321 over 990 and this simplifies to 107 over 330 as required. For part B, to rationalize my denominator, I will need to multiply by another fraction where the numerator and denominator are the same and this fraction has 7 plus square root of 5 over 7 plus square root of 5. Now the numerator of the new fraction will be 4 times 7 plus square root of 5. I will not expand yet and then for the denominator note that these two brackets have the same numbers but different signs. This is the difference of two squares. So I'm going to get 49 plus 7 root 5 minus 7 root 5, which cancels out, and then minus the square root of 25, which is a 5. So I get 4 times 7 plus square root of 5, no expansion yet, over 44. I can simplify the 44 with the 4, I get 1, I get 11, and if I split this now into two fractions, I'm going to get 7 over 11 plus 1 over 11 square root of 5, which is in the required form. For question 15, I can use a tree diagram to summarize the information I have. For the first attempt, I have a pass or fail. If there's a pass, then I stop. If there's a fail, I can try again. This time, the probability of pass is 0 0.9. The probability of fail is 0 0.1. Now, theoretically, if there's a fail, I could keep trying. But the question says at most two attempts. So I'm going to stop here. Now, the probability of having at most two attempts is the probability of getting one or two attempts. So we're talking about either this path or this path. So it's either pass or fail and then pass. Now the blue one is 0 0.7 plus the green one, which is 0 0.3 times 0 0.9 and then this will give me 0 0.97. For part A of this question, I have the sine graph. I should know where it cuts the x-axis and where it has its maximum and minimum. So at point P, I have 180, 0, and at point Q, it's my first minimum, it's 270 comma minus 1. Then for part B, I need to sketch the graph of y equals tan x for values between 0 and 360. Now, 
I should know that there are some asymptotes here and the asymptotes occur at x equals 90 and x equals 270. And also this graph cuts the x-axis at 0, 180 and 360. So let's complete by drawing the actual graph. And that is how the final graph looks like. In this question, I have a metal cube and I want to melt it and convert it into spheres. The length of the cube is 125 millimeters. If I convert this to centimeters, it will be 12.5. And this is given to three significant figures. So its lower bound is 12.45 and the upper bound is 12.55. Hence the volume of the cube is between 12.45 to the power of 3 and 12.55 to the power of 3. Now the volume of each sphere is 140 and this is to the nearest 10 so its lower bound is 135 and the upper bound is 145. To find the number of spheres I will just divide the volume of the cube over the volume of a single sphere. And since I want this to be as big as possible, I will take the upper bound of the volume of the cube and divide it by the lower bound of the volume of a single sphere. This will come out to be 14.64. So I can make 14 spheres, not 15, but 14 spheres. In question 18, I'm given a quadratic graph and the coordinates of the minimum point. And in part A, I, I need to find the coordinates of the minimum. And this is a translation of four units to the right. So the three will become a seven. The Y coordinate will remain the same. In the second part, 3f of x, this is a stretch along the y-axis by a scale factor of 3. So I'm going to keep my x the same and multiply my y by 3, and I'm going to get minus 12. And then in the third part, this is a stretch along the x-axis by a scale factor of 2 which means I'm going to multiply my x co coordinate by 2, so it becomes a 6. I'm going to keep the y the same. In part b, the curve is translated to give a new curve. This new curve has a minimum at 3, 5. So basically, I'm going from 3 minus 4 to 3, 5. So I am translating my graph 9 units upwards. So k is equal to 9. I'll start question 19 by transferring this information on my diagram. So a and b is equal to p. And since a, m to m, b is 3 to 1, it means that this is 3 parts, this is 1 part. So I've got 3 quarters and 1 quarter of p. a, c is equal to q. And since c is the midpoint of a and d, then c and d is also q. Now for part a, i, 
B and D is equal to B to A plus A to D. Now B A is the reverse of A and B, so B A is minus P plus A and D is Q and Q, so plus 2Q, and that is the answer. For the second part, M N is equal to M A plus A C plus C N. M A is equal to minus three quarters of P. A C is equal to Q. And then C N is half of C and B because N is the midpoint. I'll come to the side and find C B. So C and B is C A plus A and B, which is minus Q plus P. And I like to put them in alphabetical order, so it's P minus Q. So C N is half of that. So let's expand and then simplify. So I've got minus 3 quarters of P plus Q plus a half of P minus 1 over 2Q. And if I simplify, this will come out to be minus a quarter of P plus a half of Q. For part B, I'll try and find a relationship between M, N, and B, D. Note, M, N is equal to a quarter of minus P plus 2Q. And the thing in bracket is just B, D. Now, if you rearrange this, you can get 4 times M, N is equal to B, D. So the two geometric facts are the following. M, N is parallel to B, and D. And second, B, and D is four times M, N. Note that in part B, I don't have any arrows above M, N and B, D because I'm referring to the line segments and not the vectors. In question 20, I am given the volume of a cone whose radius at the base is twice the height of the cone. Let's start by drawing the cone. I have used x for the height and 2x for the radius. Let's work with the volume to try and find x, the Formula for the volume is the following. So let's substitute the values that we have. 562.5 pi is equal to 1 over 3 pi times 2x squared times x. So 562.5 pi is equal to 4 over 3 pi x to the power of 3. I can cross out the pi's, and then if I divide by 4 over 3, I will get x cubed is equal to 3,375 over 8. So x will come out to be 7.5. Now, to work out the curved surface area, the formula is the following, where L is the slant height, it's this distance here. So I'm going to use Pythagoras theorem. Now since x is 7.5, 2x is equal to 15. And this is the triangle I will be using. Let me extract this and put the values on. So L squared is equal to 7.5 squared plus 15 squared. L is the square root of 1125 over 4 or 
if you put this on the calculator, it will give you 15 root 5 over 2. So now I can substitute this into the formula for the curved surface area. I've got pi times 15 times this number I found above note. I'm not using decimals. I'm using exactly what the calculator gave me. And this comes out to be 790 correct to three significant figures. In question 21, note that I have an addition and a division. Now priority is given to the division. So I'm gonna put an extra square bracket here and I'm gonna work on that division first. So I've got 2x plus 3 over 1 times, and then I'm gonna flip this, and it's 7 over 4x squared plus 16x plus 15. Next step is to try and factorize the second denominator. I've got times 7 over and this is 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 5. The 2x plus 3 cancels out, so I'm left with 7 over 2x plus 5. So now let's put all together. So I'm going to bring this down and continue from here. And I have 5. Let's factorize this denominator. It's 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. This is the difference of two squares minus the fraction I found before, 7 over 2x plus 5. Now I'm going to make the denominators the same. I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 1, the second by 2x minus 5. So I have a common denominator now of 2x minus 5. 2x plus 5 and on the top I have 5 minus 7 times 2x minus 5 and this will expand to 5 minus 14x plus 35 over that denominator and finally let's simplify 40 minus 14x over 2x minus 5, 2x plus 5. And that's my final answer. In question 22, this is a standard question where I have two pieces of information and I need to solve two simultaneous equations to find a and D for the arithmetic series. So the first piece of information is that the third term is 19. So I'm gonna work with the nth term formula. So 19 is equal to a plus three minus one D. So 19 is equal to a plus two D. And then I'm also given that the sum of the first 10 terms is equal to 290 and I'm going to work with the sum formula so 290 equals 10 over 2 2a plus 10 minus 1 d so 290 is equal to 5 2a plus 9 d I'm going to divide this by 5, so I've got 58 is equal to 2a plus 9d. And now I have two simultaneous equations. I can solve them either by using substitution or by using elimination. I'll try and do elimination, so I've got 58 equals 2a plus 9d, that's the second one. I'm gonna multiply this one by minus two, so I'm gonna get minus 38 is equal to minus 2a minus 4d. Note there are many approaches when you do 
elimination depending on the letter you want to eliminate. So in my case, I have 20 equals to 5D. So D comes out to be 4. And then I'm going to substitute in the first equation, 19 equals A plus 2 times 4. So A comes out to be 11. So now that I have my two values, A and D, I can proceed and find the 10th term using the formula above. And this is equal to A, that's 11 plus n minus 1 times d and comes out to be 47.